Revelation 8. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. So, in summary, you remember in Revelation chapter 5, this scroll was introduced that no one could even look at or open or break the seals. And John wept because no one was able to uh, open the scroll. So John wanted to open the scroll. I think all the angels wanted to open it too. Everybody wanted to open it, but they couldn't. Uh, but then Jesus is found worthy to open it. So Jesus is breaking the seals and opening the scroll. And in chapter 6, six of the seals are broken. Then in chapter 7, it breaks and talks about the 144,000 Jews and the innumerable Gentiles that served God in heaven, which I think that indicates that they died on earth and that they were now in heaven. Uh, so just innumerable people dying, uh, and the first six seals are just all filled with destruction and conquering and famine. Uh, and chapter 7 gives an indication of how many people died during this destruction uh, on earth. Now we've made it to chapter 8, and the f final seal is uh, broken, the seventh seal. And the only thing that happens immediately when it's opened was silence, 30 minutes of silence. I don't know exactly what that means, <clears throat> but it would certainly have been a relief uh, over the chaos that came out when the first six seals were opened, all the death and destruction that came out when the first six seals were broken, and then there's 30 minutes of silence when the seventh one is broken. The climax where the very last seal is about to be broken so that you can unroll the scroll and read it. I don't know, it gives me a sense of, of peace. But... That peace is immediately followed by the trumpets. And the trumpets don't bring peace. So, uh, let's go on and read about the, the trumpets. Now, I first had a thought that the these trumpets would have a reference to the Feast of Trumpets, the Jewish Feast of Trumpets. I did a little bit of research, uh, and I really just don't see the connection there. Uh there's really not a lot of information about what the Feast of Trumpets is. I think we have to make some assumptions uh, what it was even for or what it pointed to or what it pointed forward to or pointed backwards to. I think it might have been the giving of the law of Moses on Mount Sinai because they blew a trumpet and stood at the Mount of God uh, when they went, entered into the covenant, the old covenant with God. <laughs> And then they remember that every year with the sounding of trumpets. Um, but these trumpets in Revelation seem to be more like battle calls, like trumpets blown by angels that unleash uh, destruction. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who had a golden censer came. So that's the eighth angel, if that means anything. Came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. All right, so this eighth angel, seven of them have trumpets, and an eighth one has a golden censer, like a staff or something. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> And he has a lot of incense to offer uh, on the altar. He's going to burn a lot of incense. And the burning of incense is associated in this passage and others with the prayers of the saints. It's like whenever we pray, it rises up like smoke to God. And God hears the prayers and smells the aroma. Uh, and there is much incense for this angel to offer. So there are many prayers that have been offered up. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of God's people 
went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. So this is a little shocking to me that these uh, prayers of the saints, which is referenced as incense that the angel is burning before God, while the prayers are being offered and while this incense is being burned, this angel scoops up some of the ashes or embers with his censer and hurls it down to earth, causing all sorts of destruction. So scooping up the prayers as they're being offered to God and throwing it down to earth and destroying the earth uh, is a very strange picture to me. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. So this sounds like uh, when that eighth angel scooped up the incense with his censer and hurled it to earth, it sounds like this is the result of the first trumpet. That first angel sounded his trumpet and this fire comes from earth, from heaven and burns the earth, the trees and the grass. The second angel sounded his trumpet and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. So this seems like instantaneous or, or back to back. Uh, the first trumpet sounds, a third of the earth, trees and grass is burned up. And immediately after that, the second angel sounds and something like a burning mountain goes into the sea and burns up. Well, it says the sea is turned to blood and a third of the living creatures died and also the, a third of the ships are destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. All right, so <clears throat> uh, so I'm not sure, I mean, the st how different would a star look from burning uh, embers or whatever that's been thrown from heaven or a burning mountain? The second angel, a burning mountain is thrown from the sky, and then the third trumpet, a burning star is thrown from the sky. I don't know exactly how you would uh, distinguish that. There must have been some difference in the way it appeared. But it still is fire from heaven. All three of the first ones is fire from heaven that falls on the earth and burns up uh, things. Some of them may be bigger than others, bigger balls of fire. Uh, but they're all balls of fire. And this third one strikes the fresh water, uh, the rivers and springs and turns them bitter so that they don't have the people don't have fresh water to drink the fourth angel sounded his trumpet and a third of the sun was struck a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them turned dark a third of the day was without light and also a third of the night okay so now we get uh, add some darkness after three balls of fire fall from heaven uh, now we blacken out a third of the day and the night <clears throat> this certainly could be done by smoke in the air uh, so I don't think it necessarily would be uh, you know I mean I don't see how it would even be possible to block out a third of the sun with you know, by turning off explosions on the sun or something like that. So, well, that part of the sun is cold 
it's not even burning. No, the, the whole sun was still burning. But from Earth's perspective, you wouldn't be able to see it. It wouldn't provide daylight, I think, is the more logical uh, conclusion that we could draw here. Uh, and if there's a lot of smoke in the air from all this burning that blocks out the sun and the moon, that just makes more sense to me. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. All right, so these seven seals on the scroll, John and everybody else wept so that they could open them. They wanted to open the scroll, but yet when they opened it, it brought just death and destruction, nothing that anybody would ever want to see. And on the seventh seal, there's 30 minutes of silence followed by more destruction. Uh, the destruction of the earth and some death of the people. Uh, they lose fresh water and they die. Uh, you know, a lot of fish and sea creatures die. A lot of trees and grass uh, is burned up. <clears throat> now, I don't, I think the whole book of Revelation is talking about the destruction of Jerusalem uh, by the Romans in 70 AD. I believe that's what it's talking about. There are many references to things that must shortly take place, things that are about to take place. Um, and it was written specifically to the seven churches of Asia in the first century. Uh, they had specific issues that they were dealing with that they were told to correct. Um, and all these things are things that were going to shortly take place or was about to take place. So I don't think we should look at this and say, well, what events in the Middle Ages uh, fulfill the book of Revelation in the 1500s A.D. or something like that? Uh, I do not believe that this book or anything in it is meant to be extrapolated into thousands of years into the future it is written to a specific first century audience about things that were going to happen to them in the first century so uh, and, and I also don't think that that all, this vision should be interpreted as a bunch of literal things that were going to happen all these things are describing great pains and woes and hardship that was going to come that they would have a hard time buying food. They'd have a hard time finding fresh water to drink. Uh, many people would die. Uh, and many Christians would be asking, oh, God, when are you going to vindicate us? Because we've died. When are you going to vindicate us? And God says, wait a little while. A few more people need to die. Uh, so that's pretty much where we are at this point. That's Revelation chapter 8.